Hi, this is Craig Stocks. I want to talk briefly about uh, star trail photography and in particular post-processing. And one of the reasons I want to talk about star trails is there's a lot of interest in night sky photography in general. And star trails are really one of the easiest things to do. Uh, it's easy to photograph. You can even use uh, JPEG mode. And post-processing is very easy. In fact, you don't need Lightroom or Photoshop. You can do it with a free program called Star Stacks. So let's just talk briefly, first of all, about uh, why star trails. I know some people love them, some people hate them, uh, but they are an interesting genre to play with. This one was taken under a fairly dark sky, but you don't really need dark skies. That's one of the nice things about star trails in nighttime photography, is you can do it over the city, uh, even over Peoria with all of the uh, light pollution. Now you won't get as many star trails because you won't be able to see as many stars, but the camera will pick up a lot more than you can see, and you will be able to record, record star trails. Uh, this was done over Honolulu, Hawaii, which is a very large, very bright uh, city with a lot of light pollution. And I'm not sure we could see any stars with uh, just by eye, but the camera could see them and we were able to do star trails. So how do you do it? Uh, let's start with the camera. Uh, very simple settings. You, you will need to go to manual focus and manual exposure. Uh, focus at infinity by focusing on the brightest star you can find and focus until it's as small as you can get it. Uh, you may have buildings in the distance in which you can just use autofocus to focus on that and then switch the camera to manual focus so that it doesn't try to refocus. Set your ISO to somewhere in the 400 to 1600 range and probably f2.8 to f4 is probably going to be wide open on your widest angle lens that you have. Uh, especially if you're shooting in JPEG, you might want to use tungsten white balance to keep the sky from having a lot of orange from light pollution. Set a shutter speed of 30 seconds, which is typically the longest shutter speed you can set. And be careful you don't accidentally choose a 30th of a second. Go all the way to 30 seconds. You want to turn off noise reduction and especially long exposure noise reduction. And the reason is those noise reduction functions cause a delay from one frame to the next. And we're going to take a lot of frames back to back, just over and over and over. And if we have a pause between frames, then that'll leave gaps in the star trails when we put the pictures together. So we want to turn off noise reduction. And then you want to just run the camera continuously, taking one 30-second exposure after another. Some cameras have an intervalometer or a time-lapse tool built in that you can set up the camera so that it just goes uh, one after the other. The easy way to do it is with a uh, remote release, uh, just a, a simple wired remote with a button. Those almost always have a lock on the button, so if you have set your shutter to continuous rather than single shot, and then just lock the button on the remote, the camera will just take one picture after another and you should be good to go. So post-processing is really easy, and for that, let's start in Lightroom. Uh, if we look at Lightroom, this is an example, and I've got, I think, 80 frames here, 30-second exposures. So each one of those that in total makes up uh, about 40 minutes. And you'll notice the first one, I did a little light painting with the uh, red lamp on my headlamp, and I did that in the first frame, you could also do it in the last frame. And the reason is if you decide you don't like the light painting, then you just don't use that frame and that doesn't take out a gap in the middle of the star trails. Um, and if we just kind of step through the frames, depending on the quality of the video, you may be able to see the stars rotating around. The North Star is about here, so the stars are rotating around the North Star. And we can see a little bit of the Milky Way behind the tree here. So to process these, do your basic processing in Lightroom to uh, adjust color, tone, whatever, and avoid popping out the stars too much if you're processing in Lightroom. And I'll talk later about how to process without Lightroom. But with Lightroom, simply go to the grid view, select all of the frames, and then right click on one of them and choose Edit In and Open as Layers in Photoshop. And since that'll take a few minutes, I already have those loaded in Photoshop. And when it loads, your layer stack over on the right-hand side, and, and this will work in uh, Elements as well, the layer stack will show the 80 frames. 
and they're all visible. And the first one will be at the top of the stack. So right now, the first one in the stack is the one with the uh, red, and then in all the rest, it's just a, a black tree, kind of a silhouette against the night sky. Really, the only processing you have to do in Photoshop, uh, if you're using the Lightroom Photoshop process, is click on the first layer, scroll all the way down to the bottom, hold the shift key and click on the last layer and that selects all the layers. Come up to this blending mode drop down and from the blending mode drop down choose lighten. And what lighten does is it selects the brightest pixels uh, from all of the layers and reveals those in the finished composite. So this will reveal all of the star trails in each one of the layers. And remember that star trail is moving as the stars rotate in each one of the layers. So choose Lighten Blend Mode, and voila, we have star trails. That's all the processing you have to do. Uh, select all of the images in Lightroom, open as layers in Photoshop, select all the layers, and then choose the Blending Mode to Lighten. Now, if you don't have Lightroom and Photoshop, or if you don't want to use Lightroom and Photoshop, there's a free program called Star Stacks, and it basically exists for one purpose, and that is to create star trails from a series of images. So, if I open up Star Stacks, and you can see it has a big spot here that says Drop Images here, so I can go to Go to that uh, folder in uh, Explorer. So here's that folder in Explorer. It's showing, uh, I've processed these out as 80 JPEGs. Now if you were shooting in JPEG, then they would already be as JPEGs and ready to go. So I can just tap Control A to select all since they're all in one folder. If you have other images, then click on the first one, shift click on the last one. Just drag those images to where it says drop images here. And now we can move this out of the way. So now we have all the images selected. It's showing us the first image. Uh, the buttons aren't really in, the, in an intuitive order, but the button that we want to use is the one that tells it to start processing, which I believe is this last button. And if you hover over the buttons, it'll usually show you what they are. If I click on that, it starts processing and we can see the star trails accumulating. It's almost done. And finished image. Took 12 seconds. And so there's our finished image in star stacks. Now we simply click on the uh, third from the left icon to save that as a finished image. And you can compare that to the uh, one in Photoshop. They look very similar. Um, I mentioned the first image has the uh, red light painting. If we decide we don't like that, if I just disinclude that layer, instead of the, uh, the red, now I just have the silhouette. That's all there is to it. Very simple. Uh, you can use Lightroom in Photoshop to get really good results. If you don't like using Lightroom in Photoshop, uh, you can just use Star Stacks, which is free, and I believe it's available for both Windows and Macintosh. And take your images in JPEG, load them into Star Stacks, and put the Star Trails image together. So I hope that works out for you. If you try it, please post your results here on the Facebook group, and I hope you all have a great day. Thanks.